Hello, and welcome to Save Your Sanity. One of the things I haven't done for a while is to talk about a group of traits that will really have you recognizing if you're dealing with a hijackal. And a hijackal is my term, so that we don't get into clinical diagnoses. A hijackal is a person who hijacks the relationship, looking for control and power and status. And when you recognize that you're with one, or you were born to one, or you have one who's a sibling, or whomever has turned up in your life, it's so important to say, hey, I recognize it. So today I wanted to do an episode on the top 10, 12, rather 12, it was going to be 10, but the top 12 traits that scream hijackal so that you won't be in denial that you won't be excusing them. You won't be saying, oh, well, they're like that sometimes. You will begin to see the patterns. And the patterns are there. They repeat. You can predict the patterns will repeat. And that's super important to see. So there are way more than 12. Of course, you know that because I've got almost 700 videos. However, I want to talk about the most frequent ones, the most annoying ones, the most tale-telling ones that will have you say, yeah, that happens. And that happens too much for my comfort. So it'll help you recognize the traits so you can recognize the hijackals and come to a point of reality with it all that you can't avoid it any longer. These are things that are happening. And they're happening too frequently. Now, you know, I divide the world into healthier humans and hijackal humans. So healthier humans are not going to do these 12 things on a regular basis or even a semi-regular basis. They might you know, unwittingly do them once or twice in their lifetime, but they're not going to be traits. And so it's important to distinguish to see what's what, and to recognize that, have you been making excuses for these? Have you been saying, oh, well, they had a poor childhood, or they had a lot of difficulty, or they're going through a bad patch? Because when you start making reasons, which is not much different than excuses, for the pattern behaviors that are poor choices, you become part of the problem. And one thing you'd have in your control to do something about is to not be part of the problem anymore. And denying that the problem exists is being part of the problem. So I wanted to help you over that hurdle with just these 12 traits that you can expect to see. You won't see them all, but you can expect to see enough of them that you can say, I have a hijackle by the tail, or they have me by the tail. And this is no good no matter which way that rolls. And I know you're going to have a tendency, no aspersions on you, everybody does it. You're going to have a tendency to say, it's not that bad. It's not that frequent. Well, it happens sometimes, but there's story after. Not what we're talking about here. We're talking about traits that show up and show you who a person is. And then you have to deal with the facts. The facts are these are traits of this person. And they happen frequently enough that I can say they are their traits. That's big. It's truly big. So let's go through the 12. And maybe, as I said, you won't hear all of them belonging to the person you have in mind. But you'll hear enough of them to know if they're a hijack. So the number one is lying. They'll lie about small stuff. They'll lie about big stuff. They'll lie about stuff that doesn't matter. They'll lie about stuff that matters a lot. They'll cover their tracks. Sometimes they just lie to confuse you, to make you second guess yourself and question your sanity. But they'll lie. 
They'll lie to other people about you. They'll lie about themselves to you. And they lie. Nobody likes to be lied to. And if you can find it possible to say to someone, you lie to me all the time. And at some level, because you don't do anything to tell them differently, it becomes okay. That's a wake up call. That's a time to say, when did it become okay for me to not respond to somebody lying to me frequently? It's not okay. It's a total disrespect. And it's not okay. So lying. Number two, projecting. Now, I've done videos on all of these things before. So if you want to do an episode just on one of them, you can just search wherever you like to get podcasts. Or if you want to come over to uh, <clears throat> um, where they are on my site, which is SaveYourSanityPodcast.com, you can find them there. And that will help you immediately. And you can find all the other episodes. So let's just look now at the second one, projecting. Now projecting sometimes is something that you don't catch in the beginning because what projecting means is the hijackal thinks I can't own my behavior. I don't like something I do, but I am absolutely petrified of owning up to it. So therefore, I'm going to pass it on. I'm going to project it onto you and say, no, that's yours. You do that. You think that. You behave that way because they will not have a flaw in themselves. So they project it onto you. And you think, oh, wow, did, did I do that? And you as a healthier human, which I hope you are, says, well, tell me more. How did I do that? Did I do it? When did I do it? And sometimes they can almost convince you to be apologizing for something you never did. But they'll project things onto you. If you were so foolish, and I say that because I've done so many episodes telling you don't poke a hijackal by telling them they are one or they're narcissistic, never works. But if you have said that, then immediately, I'm sure, if you told them they are narcissistic, they immediately projected it back on you. Oh, no, I'm not the narcissist around here. You are. And it's like, get it off my plate, back onto your plate, because I don't want that. I don't want that to be true of me, even though I know it's true of me. I don't want it to be true of me, so I'm giving it back to you. And that's projection. And they do it frequently. And once you start thinking about that trait, you'll probably see and think of lots of examples where it's happened to you. Anything that you asked them to do got turned around and became something that you were at fault for. So projection is a big one. Now, number three is gaslighting. That's been very popular to talk about in the last few years. Um, and so it's when somebody tries to tell you what your reality is. So they'll tell you what you think. They'll tell you what you feel. They'll tell you what you did. They'll tell you what the way your mind works. They will tell you what you believe. They will just simply gaslight you, meaning I'm going to manipulate your mind and tell you what you think. And if you don't believe me, I'm going to tell you you're nuts. That's the clinical word, right? But, you know, that's what they want to do. They want to paint the convenient picture for themselves to deal with and then make you a problem. So gaslighting is big. And as I said, I've done episodes on all these things. So you can listen to a whole episode, in fact, three, I think, on gaslighting. So number four is something you may not have thought of, but you felt it. You can't help but feel it in a conversation when it happens. And number four is redirecting a conversation. 
you want to go down this pathway. You know, this is happening. I want to talk to you about this. I want to ask this question. And they're uncomfortable and they don't want to go there. So they go somewhere else. You know, I meant to talk to you about well, that mistake you made last week. Like, get me out of here. I don't want to go on the conversation you want to have. I want to feel safer by finding a place that is neutral or better yet, a place where I can blame you. And so they will redirect the conversation. If you're wise and you begin to slow down in those moments and not feel quite so anxious, you can catch that and you can say, no, this the conversation I want to have is this one that goes in this direction. If you want to have that other conversation, we can do that tomorrow. When you begin to catch these things and then say, no, let's just stick with what we're talking about here. Then you start to take more control of yourself. And that's all you have control of. By having control over yourself, you may demonstrate some control over the way the relationship conversation plays out. And that's where your strength is. But knowing that they want to redirect uncomfortable conversations, not a surprise, right? They don't like to be uncomfortable, but they love to make you uncomfortable. Because that gives them power over you. So number five, I kind of got a triple header under number five because they are all related. It's sabotage, undermining, and threats. They, they like to keep you guessing as to whether or not they like you. Keep you guessing as to whether or not the relationship is viable. Keep you guessing as to whether or not you're good enough. And then if they get a little scared, then they'll throw in a threat or two. They're going to take the children. They're going to empty the bank account. They're going to not be here someday. Or even worse, as I had one client say to his wife, you're a very small woman. I could easily kill you, chop you up and put you in a suitcase and walk out of here with you. Now, I hope that never comes to that for you. But I've heard it more than once. So understanding that they will sabotage the relationship. They will do things to make it uncomfortable, make it difficult because they're trying to win. And then they will undermine that relationship and undermine you and keep you guessing as to whether there is viability in the relationship. And then they want to push it to, they will be in charge. They will threaten you. And like all hijackals, They've had their moments of love bombing where they have endeavored to show you how much they love you. They don't. Sorry, but they don't. Um, and at those moments, you've probably opened up to them and told them what scares you or what you want or what would make you happy. And they will weaponize that in a heartbeat and turn it into a threat for another conversation. Is this beginning to make sense? I mean, these really are things that you see on a frequent basis because these are traits. These are ways to have power in the relationship. So sabotage, undermining and threats. Don't you always wonder, you know, where those final words come from when the hijackal isn't getting what they want? They all lie. You know, one day I just won't come home. One day I'm just going to divorce you and you'll be ruined. One day you'll come home and there'll be nothing here, including the children. You know, always, always looking to have power over you to make you do what they want you to do. That's not your job. You may have to learn a few things about that. You know, if you want to talk to me about it. You can go to beaclient.com and use the introductory one-time, one-hour program uh, for $97 at beaclient.com. Or come on over to my Emerging Empowered community 
at joinintoday.com and have great conversations and good group calls there because these things may have become so much a part of your day-to-day -day life that you have your shoulders up around your earlobes all the time. All of these things creating fear, creating concern, creating stress and distress, which is also, if you have children, being handed down to them. So it's a very important list to look at these things and say, yeah, there's too much of this going on. There really, really is. So number six, belittling. Now I put it all by itself because it's something you kind of, I hear people all the time saying they kind of get used to it. They kind of get used to never being good enough, uh, never measuring up, expecting to be told that they're trash or inadequate or too thin, too tall, too blonde, too whatever, you know, too educated, too wealthy, too little, too late, whatever it is, whatever end of the spectrum it is, it doesn't matter. When a hijackal wants to belittle you, they will find a way and they will push on it, right? And if you notice that you have become pretty much inured to hearing things that are put downs. I really want to consider helping you get up on, off your off the floor and standing up on your back legs, not in a way to fight, just to say, I deserve to take up space and draw breath just like you do. And I'm not going to fight you on it. I'm not going to belittle you. I'm just not going to be belittled. One of the ways you can start that is to say, oh, I don't think that's true. You know, they say, well, you just, you can't get your, you can't plan your way out of a paper bag. You say, well, the children get to school on time. I've been able to keep a job. I do know how to drive a car. I do have a license. I guess there's some evidence that I can plan my way out of a paper bag. And you don't say it in a pugilistic way. It's not like fights on. It's just speaking your truth, speaking the reality of it. Not to be right, but to be clear. There's nobody who has the right to belittle someone else. You know, biggest thing I talk about in terms of relationship is episode 115. The three must-haves of a healthy adult relationship was the first one. And I know everybody can say it. It's equality. And there has to be equality. And belittling belies equality. So if there's belittling going on, we've already got a major problem. So if you think that maybe you've gotten used to it, or you say something that sounds brave like, Oh, it just goes off me like water off a duck's back. I don't even hear it anymore. Start hearing it and start realizing that oh, I need to say no to that. It's not okay. It's not all right. It's not all right if you have children for a hijackal to be belittling their father or their mother, the child's father or mother in front of them. Children know that they're part of their father and mother. Right? It's just poor parenting. Now, hijackals aren't good parents anyway. You already know that. But notice the effect it's having. Your job is to keep yourself and your children safe. And belittling? Uh-uh. Not okay. Hijackals don't get to belittle their children. They don't get to belittle their spouse. If they want to belittle somebody at work, I hope they get fired. But not at all. Not okay. Not okay on any level. Got it? Good. So number seven is manipulating. Now, sounds very complicated. Sounds involved. Sounds a lot of planning. Not so much. Sure, sometimes they'll go for the long con. 
try and figure it all out. And pull the wool over your eyes or do things to set you up for a wall. But manipulating can be as simple as saying your truth is not true. Your story is wrong. It could be gaslighting you. It could be lying about something. Or using what I call the plausible lie. I'll tell you a lie. You know it's a lie, but it has just that much truth in it that you think, mm, is that worth bringing up? Is that, is that worth a fight? Because it's got a little grain of truth in it. Could be. And so they get you on the plausible lie. And then they manipulate you because you agreed with them then. And then if you say, well, now I don't agree. Oh, but you agreed with me before. And they begin to manipulate you. To take their hands and move you around. Um, not physically, I hope. But to manipulate it means they're, they're treating you as pliable. They'll move the story around. They'll move the narrative around. And they will try to get their way and pull the wool over your eyes. Well, hopefully, you're not near any wool, and they're not good at pulling it over their eyes. And if they have been, teach them that they're not anymore. Now, number eight, I'm sure you've experienced. A hijackle will be condescending. It will treat you as, oh, you stupid person. I don't know why I bother. Or... I put up with so much. I just put up with so much by being around you. Do you re realize that sense of condensate, condescension, that you're such a mess, but I put up with you anyway. You're so lucky I stay, you know? And I'm not talking about males or female hijackals. They all do it. And that's important to recognize that they all do it. They do it in a little bit different forms sometimes, but they all do it. And so this condescension, like, I put up with you. You know, I have contempt for you. I, it's that, you know, I did a whole episode on the hijackle smirk. It's that look at you as though, I can't do it, fortunately, I guess, but... It's that look, and I'm sure you recognize it. As soon as I say the hijackal smirk, it's kind of got an element of gotcha in it. And there, you're wrong. And who do you think you're dealing with? Because you're always going to lose. It's just that look on their face that goes along with contempt, but it also goes along with the condescension. And that's no good. Especially also, again, when they do it in front of people. They like to do that, make you small in front of people, in front of other adults, because they don't think you'll fight back or speak up, or in front of the children where they think that they're safe to do it because the audience is children. But it's not okay. So beware of the condescension. Now, number nine is two things together because they go together, discounting and disrespecting. When you have a want or you have a need or you have a feeling or you have a desire, you have an opinion, who wants to hear that? Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't want to hear from you. If I want some music from you, I'll push the button. Um, your ideas, they're not worth anything. You know, I don't know who you think you are trying to chime in on everything. And they just collapse you. They just take you down to, well, I have an opinion. I have a heartbeat. I have something to say. I have a voice. And they're saying, who cares? Who cares? And they discount your very existence. And I coupled that with disrespecting because that's what it's doing. It's saying, you don't even have a right to exist. You're nothing. I have no respect for you, and I demonstrate it all the time. You have that happening in your relationship 
where you just don't feel any respect? Well, that's a good one to start on by demonstrating respect for yourself and making sure that you get some help. You know, if you want to work with me, as I said before, go to beaclient.com and you can use my one-time new client one-hour program for $97. Or you can go to join in today and become a part of my Emerging Empowered um, group. And we have membership over there. And it's all there for you. Or if you're not ready for that, you can go and take a course or read a book of things that I have for you at relationshipprograms.com. Relationshipprograms.com. Lots of help for you. But let's get on with the list. <clears throat> so after discounting and disrespecting, we're already at number 10. And one of the traits that scream hijackles is they are arrogant. Arrogant, meaning what I think is more important than what you think. I am superior to you. I am more important than you. What I, what I need takes precedent over what you need. And why don't you understand this? I am better than you. They honestly think that's true. They honestly think they're the smartest person in the room. Not true, but they think so. And they behave from that place. So this arrogant persists. And you might ask, well, how about the people who are very covert? How can you say they're arrogant? Well, they know what they're doing too. They may not feel superior, but they feel superior in the sense that I can get you to do something by playing the victim. So they're still quite arrogant about their ability to manipulate you. There's still a sense of arrogance. I think you probably really understand that one. So I won't spend too long on there. But number 11 is untrustworthiness. You can't trust a hijackal. You can't trust a hijackal. I know you want to. You super want to. And you keep maybe even doing it and then finding it falling through. But you still want to. That's a good sign that you're from the healthier human side of the planet and not the hijackal human side. Because healthier humans get hooked on hope. Healthier humans want to see the good in things. Healthier humans don't want to call it the way it is. They want to make it a little more rose-colored. And I understand that. But hijackals are untrustworthy. You can't trust them with an idea. You can't trust them with your money. You can't trust them with your time. You can't trust them with your self-esteem. You can't trust them with your children. You can't trust them with your marital assets. You can't trust them. And if you just in your head said, yes, but what about? <clears throat> no, you cannot trust them. I know you want to, but you cannot. Well, that's not true. You can if you want to, but it is not smart. It's not going to work out well. It'll keep you in the relationship for a long time, but it's not smart. The hijackals are untrustworthy. Start from that premise. Take them prove to you that they're trustworthy over a year. Not over 15 minutes, not over a week, over a year. You can't do it. You can't do it. And now the last one. Hard to describe this individual for many, many couples, many relationships with hijackals, but they stir chaos. Nothing they like better and to stir the pot, get everybody upset, get everybody angry, get everybody at each other's throats. And then they like to walk out feeling as though they did nothing wrong. They love to create chaos. That's why they love to future fake. Oh, sure, we'll do that. Maybe next week or so, 
have no intention of doing that at any time, let alone next week or so. But it's true as chaos because now you're happy that we're going to do something together, something I wanted to do. And they're happy because they got you off their back in the moment. And they know they're never going to do it. And so you're disappointed when it doesn't happen. Look into your relationship. How many times has that happened? Look for the patterns. Look for the frequency. It's not okay on any level that these things are there. It's lying, projecting, gaslighting, redirecting conversations, sabotage and undermining and threats, belittling, ma manipulating, condescending, discounting and disrespecting, arrogance, untrustworthiness, and stirring chaos all the time. Twelve top traits that scream hijackalness. And if you are clear-eyed, you can see them. And you will give them credence now after hearing this episode. Ask yourself these questions. How many traits of those 12 did the person you had in mind as you were listening have? Then, having heard this, how long have you been excusing those traits or not observing them and deciding what action to take to stop experiencing those traits? Because now would be a good time. How long will you deny that the traits are the reality of this person? How long will you excuse them or make up reasons when are you going to just say, I see who they are, and I don't care to be around them? And just a little caveat. You know, you may have been thinking about these things for quite a while. You may have been thinking about getting it together and making a relationship decision. Whether we're talking about a hijackal parent or hijackal sibling or hijackal partner, Hijackle ex, hijackle friend, doesn't matter. But the thing is, you've been thinking about it, you've been hurt by it, you've been troubled by it, your health may be in jeopardy as a result of it, you may have inflammatory diseases, which is really something that we see frequently that goes to the emotional nature of living with hijackle. And if this episode causes you to say, <clears throat> I better start doing something differently, yay, great. Because remember this, you can't change this any younger. Now is a good time to start. So be really honest with yourself and see it as it is. Listen to the episode again if it would be helpful to you so very important and until we meet again take very good care of yourself because you're precious and you matter talk soon so good evening hi hunted okay mike mike thought of the day just in the position of going no contact, I have two narcissistic parents. Good. I'm glad you're you're straddling and about to go no contact. It's hard with parents. It really is. Because we were raised to you know hijackal parents, they raised you to take care of their emotional needs. They wanted you to do that. They felt it was your job, it never was your job. And so it's a little difficult. But good for you for doing it. Hanja said, I had company over yesterday. They should have been handed and wanted to drink all my alcohol. 
I started to become resentful, so I said no more. They left shortly after. I was being used. Yes, you sure were. I mean, good for you. Like, mm -mm. no, people don't get to make the assumption that you will provide for their needs. Absolutely not. That's great. I am glad that you you said no more. You know, I used to have someone who came to my home to visit, and I had to hide all the alcohol. And I thought, why am I hiding all the alcohol in my own in my own home? So I didn't invite them to visit anymore. <laughs> Crazy for me. Hello, Latoria. I haven't seen you post here. Valuable information. I'm glad. I'm glad that's helpful to you. Oh, there's videos. Ex-in-laws have custody of their daughter's kids. They let others know that their daughter is adopted as if to go distance themselves from a less than beautiful picture of the family. I would imagine that hijackal in-laws may have had something to do with the whole situation, right? It's so common. You know, one of the big disappointments that people write to me about often is that they, they have a child, an adult child, who marries a hijackal, and they, I call them alienated parents because the hijackal in-law, new groom or bride of their child wants the child to themselves. So therefore, they want to isolate the parents and distance their new partner from the parents. And that gives them control. And that's not good. And then when there are children, they use the children as pawns and weapons of war and messengers. And it's so wrong on so many levels. So I certainly understand what you're writing about their videos is that they they want they want to make a narrative that their daughter is um, problematic and wasn't their fault. So now they're being so noble. TV, hi, I haven't seen you here before. I really needed to hear this tonight. You are so welcome. You know, I usually don't create these topics until Monday morning. And I just sit quietly and see what I want to talk about. So maybe I heard you. <laughs> maybe I heard you when I decided on this one. Tanta said, there are good points. I'm learning that to trust my gut when a behavior doesn't sit right with me. Great. You know, as long as we pay attention when our gut has something to say, we're ahead of the pack. If we just don't try and quiet it down and say, oh, no, bad me, I'm having that thought. No, you listen to all parties that come, and then we make decisions. So that's great. I just for those of you who haven't been here before, <clears throat> it takes about 20 seconds after you put in a comment for it to show up where I can see it. If 30 seconds go by and there are no new comments, I take that as everybody's happy with what has been asked or said or done tonight. So if you're sitting on a question, be sure to pop it in there before we have a 30 second lag and I disappear. Video said, meanwhile, my ex-in-laws say, my ex-husband is their only hope of being okay. When my kids are neglected, they started to go fund me to buy them a house near them. Oh my goodness. <laughs> their only hope of being okay. I'm sorry that that's, that that's hurtful. I can imagine how hurtful that is. Just as I reread those words, that your ex-husband is their only hope of being okay. What a weight. And then buying a house. 
<laughs> so much. You're welcome, Hanjin. I hope it was helpful. So being able to see clearly these traits that are there. Sometimes we just forget about them. They, 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 we kind of gloss over them. We're so tired that we don't notice them anymore. We've given up. But I hope tonight's episode will refresh some of those things for you. That will help you see that these things are happening. I may have become so exhausted I don't pay attention to them anymore. But see that they're there. It's time for you to have a plan. How are you going to move toward health? What is that plan? Jamie, hi. This is so validating. I'm grateful for this space. I'm learning about my past, my present, and my future. Thank you. You're welcome. And, and I am always happy when people are here and feel free to ask their questions because this is such important stuff. And if by any chance we had hijackal parents, we're almost 95% sure we're going to have a hijackal relationship with somebody, especially the first person you think we're falling madly in love with. And unless we do our own work and learn all of these things, we will keep repeating those relationships. So until we meet again, take very good care of yourself because you're precious and you matter. Talk soon. <laughs>